Hi, good evening. It's Gene from Math Star Observatory. How many people are right now taking things for granted? Yes, it's all changed, hasn't it, guys? You know, who could have predicted things would be the way they are? Um, you know, we've got a few things coming up over the next few days here at the observatory. We're going to be pulling the SD cards out the um, TriMag and the Magnetosphere sensor. I was speaking to Richard over in the Gold Coast in um, Australia. Is going to be forwarding us is last month's data but you know how much do we take things for granted look how much in such a short space of time things have changed in our world and uh, in a few minutes I'm going to show you the co2 readings and you might be thinking why even bother well the fact is that you know most of the oil companies around the world have reduced their production by 90%. That's because 90% of the traffic, the ships, the aircraft are not in circulation because of this lockdown. And we're not using our cars. So as you can imagine, there is a massive glutton of oil out there. And you might have noticed that the pumps, the prices starting to creep down a little bit as a result of that. So things are changing, guys, and uh, you know our governments are really not interested in you know providing a service to the general public. We can see that clearly here in the UK. Three hundred, no, four hundred thousand, or was it three hundred thousand? Let's say three hundred thousand companies applied for emergency assistance off the government because of the shutdown. They told them. They couldn't open their business because it wasn't a necessity. Could have been the tourist industry, uh, bars, restaurants, you know, that sort of thing. And to date, uh, 4,300 have had assistance granted to them. You know, and we've been in lockdown now over here in the UK for three weeks or more, going into the fourth week, are we? And... Uh, you know, you just got to put it all into perspective. Things are not going to be the same. You know, countries are printing up money faster than you can even imagine. Um, Donald Trump, we need to, you know, inject two trillion, four trillion, six trillion into the economy to keep it afloat. But you know, when we look at the stock markets, you know, people are underselling the stock market. And making huge profits out of this crisis. And yet they keep the stock markets open. I can understand to some point why they do that. Uh, as most of you would do if you was in the understanding of how the economy is working and things like that. If you um, shut the stock markets down. People then find uh, they need to you know, get money elsewhere. So they start to make a run on the banks. And, you know, that leads to, you know, complete collapse. But it's going to end up there, I think, in the end, anyhow, because now they've injected so much fiat currency into the economy, you know, it, it's going to happen in it, you know, in any case. So, anyhow, you know, we're looking at some uh, pictures of Mars surface, some of the ice on there, some of the water, and... You know, I wanted to talk about this because, you know, as we take every day for granted and until recently, we realised that, you know, all our freedoms can be taken away from us. We can be threatened with fines and even imprisonment for just going out the house, um, you know, enjoying natural freedoms. Most of them have been taken away from us. So, you know, today uh, for a lot of people, they wake up in a different world. You know, they used to go to work every day, um, you know, pay the bills on time. You know, for a lot of people, things have changed dramatically. What we have seen on the other end of the spectrum is the government's uh, bailout, the too big to fails. And again, you know, never bailing out, you know, the people at the bottom. You know, what we've done is we have completely eradicated middle class from society. You now only have super rich and super poor. And a lot of people right now are probably very worried 
about what the outcome will be in the next few months. And if they continue in the strategy, which they are, and they don't get the help out to those people that need it, then there's going to be some big uh, changes. You know, I can see social unrest, as we've seen now forming in Italy, um, you know, taking place more. I was a bit disappointed. You know, I've made the effort to do a bit of research on the ONS report yesterday, which is the government statistics um, published uh, data on uh, COVID virus, um, you know, uh, 19 uh, deaths. Because we all know that they're only recording the ones that die in hospitals, and a lot of countries are following suit on this. But, you know, I, I knew that I could get the statistics on the deaths that had been registered. And although, you know, it'd been left to the doctor's discretion whether he put down pneumonia or COVID-19 or other respiratory related diseases that the person had died of, uh, you know, I knew that there would be at least an opportunity to see the others that had died outside the hospitals that the governments re, uh, record and give us every evening, so it seems. And, you know, I'd found that there was like 5,000 on week 13 of this year recorded that died in the hospital and there was over 6,000 that had been recorded of dying of COVID-19 outside yet the government only report on the ones that die in the hospitals. I think that was a bit let down of uh, information that people really need to know because they need to know that this is a serious matter that you know people in care rooms are seriously vulnerable and you know that the government is focusing its target on providing you know a service with the health system the nhs in this country and neglecting uh you know supporting all the other health healthcare systems like elderly people's homes where these people are the most vulnerable you know and uh, as a result you know we heard nearly 15 people died in one housing home in a short space of time that's the reality of you know uh, the neglect by the government uh, to, to provide widespread help not just focusing on keeping the NHS in service I mean it, there's been some massive failures with regards to this I'm, I'm sure they they've not been um coherent enough in in providing what was necessary to be you know handed out to nurses doctors and carers and as a result what we're seeing is more people uh dying along the sides you know uh when we get round to a magnetic pole shift it's going to be even worse because everyone will be equally susceptible to uh, the radiation inbound at that time as a result of a weakened magnetosphere. Now, I've said, uh, you know, a few times in the last few videos, you know, we've been monitoring the magnetosphere strength. It has decayed very little and even uh, insignificantly little at this moment. However, we are still seeing the poles migrate towards Siberia. And it's the magnetosphere, really, that we should be interested in, more than anything. Um, it's not quite sure what happens to the human uh, conscious when the poles reverse, uh, how that affects us. But I will say this, that every cell in our body is magnetically aligned to the poles. So when they reverse dramatically quickly, there has got to be some uh, psychological effects with regards to that, but more so when the magnetosphere collapses. And at the point of the reversal, when we reach probably that 40 degrees in around about three years' time, uh, we will see the effects of this uh, creeping up upon us. And I think the COVID-19 virus that's now taking you know, hold over the, over the world uh, is, is like a teaser to what is about to come uh, we can't control uh, the cardiac arrhythmic uh, behavior of individuals that will have 
that experience at that point in time when the magnetosphere collapses and more cosmic radiation is inbound as a result. Uh, we can't control the carcinogenic uh, increase as a result of that either. And on top of that, we will continue to see uh, the secondary effects of you know, all this, which is the changing of the climate, which we're already witnessing. You know, it is shifting, guys. You have to realise that. It is shifting in a way that is resulting in less agricultural output in a time where there has never been so many people on this planet. You know, it should send shivers down your spine, literally. Make the hair stand up on the back of your neck as to what we are about to face. If you think COVID-19 is a major change in everything then when we do experience the pole reversals you know it is going to be just an increase exponentially and much much worse across the range and you know we could also and i don't want to fear spread i don't want to just focus on the most dramatic and worst case scenario but you have to incorporate that yeah mars is a testament to what has happened to a planet that lost its magnetosphere. We know that there is still small pockets of ice frozen on the planet, on its poles. And we know it did have, at some point, a magnetic uh, field that protected it, probably protected its atmosphere and its water on its surface. But when the magnetosphere collapsed, you know, that ceased to protect the planet and therefore it was subject to sputtering and then in time you know uh, the evaporation of the water off its surface and leaving it looking like it does today we've got evidence that there was water on Mars we can see that by the erosion that has taken place over thousands of years through water running through these little vessels that we see now these veiny structures on the surface of its of its terraform so we know that at some point it had water liquid water on its surface and it no longer does and we know that also it lost its magnetosphere as a result of something solidifying probably in its core shutting down the magneto you know all this i will say guys at this point is one of the reasons why i've been fascinated with the uh, pole reversal that we're in right now over the last hundred years it is progressively migrating over recent time the last 40 years it's been moving uh, faster over shorter spaces of time showing us that it's an indication that, that it is active and it is in a reversal and at some point it will reverse hopefully but there's nothing to say that it won't stall and the reason why I say that is because it's 500,000 years on average overdue every 300,000 years it used to reverse but now it has gone 500,000 years without a reversal so there's something differently happening within our core of our earth that we enjoy and you know the results are as we are seeing you know dramatic changes in the jet streams you know um, agricultural land going offline and at a time where it's so needy uh, food on this planet and then we add in this interference with covid virus it's like it's almost breaking us into the big um, show you know this is the trailers that lead up to the show uh, you know what we're seeing right now with just the results of covid19 is a shutdown of manufacturing of uh, livestock that gets into the market so we can enjoy you know uh, proteins like chicken beef lamb etc and you know we're seeing them at this moment tip it literally into the ground and bury it as well as a lot of vegetation uh, that we eat like onions salad packs etc uh, etc et you know what you've got to imagine is you know there's hotels restaurants that have shut down which buy a lot of this stuff usually and all of a sudden at the flick of a switch have stopped so you know i want to just show you the results of the co2 um you know that 
tests that we take here uh, regularly uh, this evening and I just want to pose that question you know if everything has been shut down for that at least last three weeks uh, globally you know with shipping aircraft travel you know people using the vehicles for you know unessential traveling uh, obviously it's all been banned so 90% of the world's oil production has been shut down as a result you know nobody's needing it so it's not needed to be produced uh, we've seen the produce uh, the product um, valuation drop at the pumps and you know mainly I just want to put that uh, out there to you guys and, and just say to you if it is the case that mankind is putting CO2 into the atmosphere at the rate it is then why aren't the CO2 rates dramatically dropping as a result of 90% of the world's uh, carbon not being burned why is that it's probably because mankind is not responsible for CO2 and you'll find that out later in this next part of the video so you know guys there's a link down there if you want to support us we had absolutely no support on this channel yesterday and that is the first time I've ever witnessed that take place so I just don't this isn't a common trend where nobody feels that what we deliver on this channel is worth at least a coffee so with that guys I'll roll the next part of the video and I'll end it there so you just have a great evening and I'll say what I usually do bye from there from this point enjoy the next part of the video for the last three weeks 90% uh, of the world's uh, vehicles have been off the road which means there hasn't been that much pollution yet there has been no change to the amount of uh, CO2 in the atmosphere with regards to parts per million as you can see it's 417 to 418 it's fluctuating between the two but really at this point in time we should see obviously if 90% of the world's vehicles and pollution has been cut as a result of the coronavirus shutdown in many countries we should see that reflect on the man-made carbon and we simply don't see that so what this tells us is that you know our effect on the atmosphere with regards to the amount of carbon emissions that we pour out is negligent and it should be the case in any case when you're looking at 80 uh, or 800 gigatons of carbon coming out of the oceans every year and then going back into them and the same on land our 40 gigatons is completely insignificant in the um, equation you know our impact is negligible and this proves it and you know it's only through a unique opportunity where the majority of the world's traffic cars buses trains uh, ships and aircraft are on the ground not moving and as a result of that we've been able to take the uh, advantage of that and do a co2 reading and what we find is that you know it means nothing with regards to the amount of co2 in the atmosphere i know some people will argue oh you know it's only been three weeks and you know therefore you've got to give it more time to adjust it's not the case you know we should see a significant impact it should be definitely under 400 parts per million if mankind is responsible for putting you know the co2 in the atmosphere to the 416 parts like what we see right now but officially they'll say it's about 408 parts per million or 404 parts per million it's it's, it's not the case what you can see is you know it virtually being the same um, I think it's worth just checking on North School website over the central England to see what they are saying that the CO2 parts per million is but you know what you can't have it all roots you can't have uh, you know 90% uh, of the traffic off the road 90% of the vehicles uh, across the range off the road and uh, still say that man is putting out too much carbon emissions I think the CO2 meter would reflect what the true matter is and as we can see there is no change whatsoever and it's exactly what I'd expect to see uh, given the fact that you know the amount of CO2 that we put up into the atmosphere is negligible as you can see it's fluctuating between 414 415 
sometimes 417 but not below 400 that's a big um, difference so you know we've been able to take advantage at least of this uh, virtual virtually global shutdown of majority of the transport that's uh, polluting as they say so I thought I'd bring that to your attention guys I thought it was important